Howdy, Possum Patty here and I'm nature journaling. This is a nature journal page I did after I saw a woodcock crossing the road the other day. I made this nature journal page interactive because I just love the way the timber doodle dances across the street. He's got quite the strut. So this video is going to be about how I created this page. My first step in making my interactive timber doodle page was to come up with a plan. I went on YouTube and watched some videos on how to do pop-up book pull tabs because I wanted the body of the timber doodle to move. I watched the video and then I did a little mock-up of what I wanted to construct. I sketched out a little bird and I built the tab, which I'll explain in a minute, and put the the body of the bird on the tab so it would move. I took some notes while I was doing this. First thing I wanted to remember is that I would have to make the uh, woodcock or the timber doodle on a separate paper, that I have to measure it for size so it would place correctly on the journal page. If it was too big, there would be no room for it to move. And if it was too small, maybe the action wouldn't look so good. I decided I would have to make the head or actually the neck a little bit longer because I wanted the body to move while the head stood still and I wanted part of the neck to cover the part of the body that was moving. I realized from watching the video, the how-to video, that the slot would, should only be as long as the movement that I wanted. So I didn't want a really long slot because the body, I didn't want the body separate from the head. So the body would be moving, but look, look like it's still attached to the head. So you don't want the slot to be too long. You can make your tab as long as you want and trim it afterwards. I decided also that I needed to really check in the journal to make sure there was nothing on the back of the page because that's where the mechanism would go and that the page next to it had nothing on it because when I was done, I'm just gonna glue it around the edges so you can't see the mechanism, but making sure that the tab still functioned. After I completed this plan, I went back to the video and watched it again, and I realized a couple of things. The first most important thing that I realized was the movement of the body wasn't quite horizontal. It was a little bit more diagonal. So I made a note here to change the direction of the slot from horizontal to diagonal because the movement of the body seemed to be more down than straight across. And the second thing I noticed is that the feet stay still. I noticed that the head stood still, but then watching it again, I noticed that the feet stay still also. So when I do my actual page, I'm gonna have to cut the feet off and attach them to the page so that only the body moves and not the body and the feet. So those were two important things I noticed when I went back and watched the video for the second time. So this is step one, and that is to make a plan on what you want to do. So going by my plan, the first thing I did was open my journal, and this is a Strathmore 500 series mixed media journal. Came to an empty page, checked to make sure there was nothing on the back because I'm going to have to glue these two pages together. So I have blank pages here. And I want to just do a quick timber doodle sketch for size. So I just got a piece of copy paper and sketched out a timber doodle, the size that I wanted to put on the page. I made the neck just a little bit longer so the body would go underneath and I cut off the legs so that they could stay still and this is kind of large but I like it and I think this is the size I'm going to go with for this page so when I complete my activity the body is going to move but the feet and the head are going to stay the same next what I did was I took my little sketch here that was the right size and I sketched it on a piece of this illustration. This is like a smooth bristle. It's nice and heavy though. It's 150 pounds. It's very smooth. Marker does not go through it. 
and I wanted something strong enough to construct the tab and the mechanism behind the page. So I figured this would be very sturdy. Plus I decided to do the bird itself in marker. And this paper is really good for marker. It doesn't bleed through, doesn't feather. I just want to make a note about using the markers. And that is I looked at my reference photo and I tried to pick out all the colors that I saw in my reference photo. And the reason I did this, number one, is because I have a lot of markers. This is one bag. And these are all Spectrum Noirs. And these come from AC Moore or Michaels. And let me get the other bag. And I have more in this bag and a lot of these. I have Copics or Copics. And I also have Premier by Nicole. So I have a lot of markers. I didn't want to sit here with 100 markers on my table while I was coloring the bird. So I went through all my markers. I looked at my reference photo. I tried to pick out the colors that were on the bird. Did a little swatch test here and wrote down the number or the name of the colors. So when I was actually coloring the bird, I could just use this chart to grab the correct markers. I made a little quick video of me coloring the bird. So you'll see me doing this in that video. Okay, now my next step is going to put a little bit of a background on the page so my timber doodle can walk across the street. Just a very loose watercolor background because I want to be uh, writing a bunch of notes and I want the bird to stand out so the background is going to be very loose. So here's my background. Very loose, very quick. And now I can place my bird crossing the street. The gray part is the street. Now I have to be careful here because he's got a very long beak. I want to make sure his head fits on the page. And I want the body to move vertically. But not very far. So if you measure the movement, the movement is not even a half an inch. Maybe a little over a quarter inch would be enough movement. Let's see how far down do I want it to go. From there, maybe to there. Could exaggerate a little bit. You don't want the body leaving the head, but you do want to show some movement. So maybe from the edge down to there. So let's measure this distance from there to there. And it's about, let's call it half an inch. So the slot for movement has to be in half an inch, but we have to take into account the support because this is going to be attached to the body. This is going to be the tab. I made the tab an inch wide because I want to have it sturdy enough because you'll be pulling on it. And then this will be attached to the tab and this support will be attached to the body and I have to make a slot here. Now because this is half an inch and I want the movement to be about a half an inch, then the slot has to be about an inch long. So you can see I have a little vertical, I'm sorry, keep calling it vertical, I have a little diagonal line here. And let's just make sure it's just about an inch long. So if we make an inch from here. Okay. So if I make my slot an inch long, and the body's on the supports a half an inch so the 
it's going to be moving this much. Let's see how that looks. So the body will be moving that much. And I believe that'll be sufficient. Okay. I'm going to put a, or a couple pieces of cardboard behind here. And I am going to use a sharp knife to cut my slot. Of course, when you want something, it's over, always on the other side of the room. And I'm just going to cut that slot. Now it has to be wide enough for me to get this support in because this has to come through there and be attached to the bird. And I have to give it enough space to glue this down. So probably like that. It doesn't have to be very wide. You're not going to see this because it's behind the bird anyway. I'm not very good at cutting. Almost. up a little bit. Okay, my pull tab I said is about an inch wide and I'll be making a slot but I'm not going to do that quite yet because I have to make a slot for this to come through so I can grab it do that in a few minutes see I want this to glue down be kind of sturdy so what I might do is glue it down make it about an inch See, it's about nine inches, about four and a half. So probably just under an inch, I'm going to bend it here. So this part, I'm going to attach to here and then because the slot is so small what I'm going to do is just fold this to the middle like that and take this side fold that to the middle you see how I did that so this can come through the slot And then I'll be attaching the bird body to this. And then that'll be moving with the tap. And the reason I did that was because I wanted a larger surface to glue this on here. I'm going to trim this later because, you, as you see, I want to put some supports on the back. Okay, so. We're going to glue this down, and let's see, it 
usually do my gluing on the scrap. So I'm just going to put this in probably a little less than half because I want to have some extra for the tab and I need room for support on this side. So the middle, so probably, I could always trim it off later so it doesn't matter. I just want to leave room for support here and room to make a tab up there. So if that's the middle, I'm just going to go below the middle a little bit. I'm going to use some of this uh, Tombow Mono Liquid Glue. I'll put the link to a really good series on how to do pop-up books and interactive pages below in the description. You're much better off watching the guy who really knows how to do it than watching me. Okay, we're going to have to leave this to dry for a while. And then we'll come back and do the next step. Okay, this part is dry, but I think I'm going to add just a little drop of glue here. If I can get the glue to come out. the slot. Okay, so I'm going to put this in backwards for now to see where I'm going to put my slot. Probably I want to make a something to grab here. So I probably want my slot here. So I'm going to make the slot for the tab way up here. tab is an inch, so I want to make it just a hair over an inch. This does not have to be very wide. Okay, so far so good. Now the next thing I want to put on 
is the support on the back. Which is going to go over here. And I just have a piece of this Bristol board. And I'm going to glue it there just to keep this from moving around too much. My glue paper. I need to open up a new bottle of glue. So much easier. Okay, you just want to make sure you don't get glue on the part that moves. Okay, now we're going to let that dry. Okay, now I'm going to glue the head down and glue the body to the support. I used a little piece of painter's tape to hold the body to the support and the head to the page just to figure out exactly where I want them. And I think this is going to work very well. So the first thing I'm going to glue down is going to be the head. I'm going to make a little mark. Here and here and here. So I can line that up after I take the tape off. Get my glue page. Now I don't want any glue on this part because that's where the body will be moving. So I need to be careful just to put the glue at the top. Let's see if I can get this lined up on my marks. it down, move the body, hold that for a second. Okay, now I want to mark where I'm going to put the body on the support. Maybe I'll mark it there. Pull that off. Okay, I only want to put glue on that. I don't want to get it on the rest of the page. Grab another scrap here. And 
or maybe I'll, I could trim that after. on the mark like that press this down make sure everything can still move I get the glue here going to be tricky because I don't want the bird to wind up being glued to the page. Let's see. Find a barrier. Let's slip this in here. Okay, so far so good. Still a little wet. I'm going to trim the support. What's missing is legs. Where did the legs go? One leg. And the other leg. Okay, I made the legs a little longer so that when the body moves, Legs are not very long anyway. You don't want to get any glue on the body because the body has to move. I'm going to do now is trim my tab and what shape would I like it to be let's see this looks good
and there we have our funky timber doodle dance. What I'm going to do is probably color in the tab, do my journaling, and then I'll be back to conclude the video. So here we have it, my completed nature journal page. I looked up some facts about the timber doodle. The woodcock, the American woodcock, has a lot of really interesting nicknames, but timber doodle is my favorite. I wrote down when I saw the bird, where it was, and it was crossing the road. I put a reference into the Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold, where he talks about the sky dance that these birds perform as a mating ritual. I put down that its habit is crepuscular, which means it's out during dawn and dusk. It mostly eats worms. It's found in Eastern North America. And also it can fly the slowest of any bird. Its eyes are located quite high up in its head. And this gives it the best vision. Its visual field might be the largest of any bird. 360 degrees in the horizontal plane and 180 degrees in the vertical plane. That means you can't get anywhere near this bird and that it won't see you. It also has a very unusual bill. It's prehensile, which means the top part of the bill can actually move open and close. It sticks its bill down in the mud and catches worms, which is its favorite diet. They're not very big. They're only about 10 to 12 inches long. They weigh about five to eight ounces, and its bill is about two and a half to two and three quarters inches long. So here's my little American woodcock or timber doodle, as I like to call them, doing its little strut across the street. You can see them doing their mating rituals this time of year, March and April. But you have to go out at dusk and find a wooded area with a close by open flat area because that's like where they like to do their dance. Thanks for watching.